Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lunchtime Learning on the Embrilliance channel. I just want to make sure my microphone's working so you can all hear me. Thanks for checking in today. I know it's a short holiday week and I just thought I would pop in and talk to you a little bit about some of the lettering features of the Embrilliant software. In particular, script fonts. And I've noticed there's so much fun to stick. There Script fonts are fun to stitch, especially the bean stitch ones, because they are quick and that's what holiday season, a lot of our projects that we're working on are, on are um, looking for quick projects. So I thought I would work and show you some of the cool functions available using the Romance Collection bean stitch font. So this is typical to one that's available to us. So you can get the Romance Collection from the Embrilliance website. Check it out. It's under Fonts and Collections. So let's pop on into the software and see what we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm in my Embrilliance program is I am going to click on my lettering tool. That's up here at the top, the big letter A. Now, I, since I was playing in my software, the, it comes up with the romance font. But normally, it sh will your default when it comes in should be on block. So let's and let me set everything back to normal because I was playing with all these cool features. Okay, so this is normally how it comes up: single line text, ABC block font. That's what normally happens when you click on the lettering tool. So let's make a couple adjustments. The first thing we notice is that we are in single line text. So if I go in here and I type in happy holidays, D-A-Y-S exclamation point, hit the enter key. You'll notice that it types two words on our screen and I want to choose that romance font that is mentioned. So I'm gonna to go to my font list. And since I know the first, the name of the font is Romance Bean Stitch, I'm gonna type in RO and it will slow, it pops down to the ROs in my font list. So I'm gonna choose the Romance Bean Script 5. That means it does five passes. One thing I noticed as a, a common question or something that happens in the Brilliant and Brilliance group, which is a fantastic users group here on Facebook, is if someone has two words and they are trying to get more spacing in between these two words, in single line text, there is no slider. There's a slider for slant, which allows you to change your font, make it italicized or straighten it up. There's a spacer for spacing, which moves all the individual characters. And ours actually looks pretty good, so I'm not going to play with that. But there's no way to add extra spaces between happy and holidays. In fact, if you were to put your mouse cursor in between the two and add more spaces, thinking that that would work, when you hit the Enter key, nothing happens. And that's because of the way the lettering tool works in embroidery software. It's not a typewriter. It's... Definite, it's, it treats, these are actual designs that are using a lettering tool. So how do you get more spacing in between these? If you are just have our single line text like this and you want it to just move holidays over, so you don't have a lot of words to go through, you can simply select the H of the second word or the first character of the second word, put your mouse cursor on that lower triangle and move it over to the side. Now that's kind of, that's really a handy tool because it grabs that letter and all the letters after it and moves it. But if you have something like a text that has a lot of words, that could be a little tedious. The other thing that could be is that if you're not careful, you may accidentally move it up or down because you have complete controls over where you want to move those words. It's a really powerful tool. However, let me go back here, get rid of all those extra spaces, hit the enter key, put it back in the center of my hoop so that it sees it. And let's go, let's choose this and go into multi-line text. So even though this is a single line of text, if you click on multiple line text, 
Notice that you still have the slant space slider, so you can still change your italics. You still have the spacing slider that does each individual character, but you also have a word spacing. And this is really handy for if you want to make your words get a little bit further apart. The software recognizes a single space to be in between words, and it adjusts that space by using the word space. Now, what if we had, the cool thing about multiple line text is that if we have happy holidays, so I'm going to put happy holidays, gonna get rid of this, hit the enter key, and we're gonna put wishes to you, exclamation point, click set. That puts multiple lines on here. Now let me get put wishes to you on one line. Hit set. So we have multiple words in multiple lines on our screen. If we that word spacing slider adjusts all the spaces between all of the words. So it's even it's it's just as if you were adding like two or three spaces in between. It's a really nice handy tool function of our lettering tool. The line spacing also automatically adjusts multiple the spacing between the lines of the text. So even if you are only working in a single line of text and you have multiple words, switch over to multi-line text and you'll have the capability of using that word spacing slider to get a little bit more space between your words. So I'm gonna thought that was a nice handy tip to share with you. Now on this, I'm going to go and I'm gonna type in happy, hit return, hit holidays. Now, one thing to also notice is that on multi-line multi -line text, you have, when you hit the enter key on your keyboard, it goes to the next line of text. So it's more like a carriage return on an old fashioned typewriter. And whatever you type here, doesn't show up into your display pane until you hit this set button. One other feature of multi-line text is the ability to change where the justification is. Default is center. You can also set it to be left or right. So if you are working on, it's a there for whatever project that you're working on. Don't need to explain it. You guys know when you wish you had a center or a left or a right. Now you know in multi-line text, you can adjust your justification. All right, so let me move this guy all the way up here in the left-hand corner. And I'm going to copy and paste him so that we have him set. Copy, paste, and I'm gonna take a copy of that and move him over here. And let me just change his color so that we can try something new. Click on my color chip, scroll up, and I'm gonna make it red. That's a, close enough to a red color. Say you want, you like this font, it's exactly the way you want it, but you wish it was a little bit fatter. For whatever reason, you need it to be bold. Maybe you can't change this into a satin stitch with just essentials functions, but what if you wanted it to have a little bit more presence? Maybe you're stitching it on a, a darker fabric and you're using a, a darker color and you really wish it would stand out more. How could you do that? One way is by making two copies and offsetting them just a little bit. So let me show you how an easy way that we can do that. I'm gonna select it and hit the S key on my keyboard so that we zoom in on this selection. Get up nice, close, and personal to our stitches. I'm gonna zoom out just a hair so I can see what I'm working on. The copy and paste works in such a way that when you copy something, so I have this selected, and I hit copy, which is the shortcut button here, or you can go to the edit menu and choose copy from that, whatever's easiest for you to remember. It copies it to the clipboard, and then when it pastes it, it puts a copy, that copy, right back on top of the original. So you can't even see that it's there. If you left this alone, that would actually, and this is a five pass bean stitch, it would actually do 10 stitches, one right on top of each other. That might be a little bit too heavy. However, we can use our keyboard to nudge it over just a little bit. 
your keyboard has arrow keys on it, left, right, up, and down. So if I hit the right arrow key one time while it's selected, do you see how it moved it over? You can actually see the shadow of the original one right there. If you hit it, you can move it over. It moves over one millimeter at a time. So you can actually really stagger your lettering. Let me go back so that's right on top of each other. If you, on a Mac, there's, a, there's two operating systems that in Brilliance works on, Mac and Windows. If you are on a Mac and you hold down the shift key when you hit that right arrow key one time, you'll notice it moves a very micro minute, micro amount. Do you see how it's kind of nudging it? And I'm only going to the right. It's actually going 0.1 millimeters over. So just a hair. It's one tenth of one millimeter. If you are on a Windows computer, and this is the difference between the operating systems, if you hold down the control key on your keyboard, as you hit down the left or the right arrow key, it will nudge over. So Mac people hold down the shift key to nudge and Windows hold down the control key to nudge. So let me go back and I'm just to get it back because I was showing you how it worked. I'm going to delete it and start over again. So I select it. I go to copy, paste. And if I hold down my shift or control key and go over one, two, three, four times or five times, that's just a half a millimeter. So if you look at your stitch out, it's just a little bit bolder and more prevalent than it was because it's just a little bit staggered. It's like putting two threads right next to each other. So it's just a little bit bold. That's a really, that's kind of a neat feature if that's what you had wanted. Okay. Now the next thing that I wanted to show you, because that's really kind of a neat thing, is how can we do something artistic and change this into a ribbon style? It's the same technique that we were doing, but I'm going to take this guy, copy, paste him, and I'm going to move him down to the bottom. So he's all by himself. Hit the S key and we're going to zoom in on him. Okay, so we have him. He's copied. I'm going to hold down my, sh I'm going to do another copy and paste of this one. So it's right on top and I'm going to nudge it over. So I'm nudging, holding the shift key and I'm going to nudge it over five times. One, two, three, four, five. And you notice it's, that's a half a millimeter. Let me do six, seven, just to give it a little space. It, this is art. You can do whatever you want. You can also nudge it down a little bit by holding down that control key and using the down arrow key. So I nudged it down three times and you can see on the screen that it's just a little bit like a shadow. I don't, I, hopefully you're getting as excited as I am about this because this is actually changing a font into something else, changing this bean stitch into a completely different look. While I did that, I nudged it down. I'm going to click on the color button, click on the color chip, and let me scroll down and find white. There we go. That one will work. Click OK. We now have a two color font. Now, if I take this one and do a copy and a paste, and I'm going to, I went over seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Down three. One, two, three. Click on the color chip. I'm going to go to my palettes and change that exact same color red. And look at that. I just created a ribbon looking font from my bean stitch font. Isn't that cool? Now, you're not going to want to color sort this. Could you? Sure, you'll get a different look. But the look that I was going for is that I wanted it to stitch, I wanted it to like ribbon candy. I wanted the red to stitch first, then the white on top of it, and then the red on top of it itself. I didn't want, it would be noticeable if you color sort that these little areas wouldn't exist because all the reds are going to stitch together. So you really have to change the thread. But that's why we're doing that's why we do this. This is art. This is a different look we're getting. But just think of all the different holidays 
We have Halloween, that could be orange and black. We have Memorial Day or Independence Day, that's red, white, and blue. Any holiday, Thanksgiving could be orange and brown. Uh, summer, spring, happy birthday. So much fun. You've just completely added a new font to your existing font collection. Anyway, I just thought I would share this tip with you so that to inspire, get some quick stitching holiday gifts ready for you this season. And I hopefully you enjoyed that nice tip on how to do spacing with multi-line text for both words and lines, as well as how to change your running stitch um, fonts into something a little bit different. Take care and have a great afternoon.